Lord's Mass for the following intentions. We continue to pray for the special intentions of uh, the Godiville family offered by Aline and Denise Martin for the speedy recovery and well-being of Albert Pangyot. And we also pray for thanksgiving for the goods of the earth and for the continuous well-being and healing of all the sick and for the stop of the spreading of the coronavirus and for the safe travel of all the travelers today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear friends, mother, brothers, and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess unto you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. To my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Son of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who on the solemnity of the Apostles Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy of this day. Grant we pray that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of a right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you to the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He had James, the brother of John, killed with a sword. After he saw that it pleased some of the people, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the festival of unleavened bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison and had handed over to four squads of soldiers to guard him. Intending to bring him out to the people after the Passover. While Peter was, there, was kept in prison, the church prayed fervently to God for him. The very night before Herod was going to bring him out, Peter bond with two chains was sleeping between two soldiers, while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him saying, Get up quickly, and the chains fell off his wrists. The angel said to him, Fasten your belt and put on your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realize that, that, that what was happening with the angel's help was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. After they had passed the first and second guard, they came before the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went outside and walked along a lane, when suddenly the angel left him. 
Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I am sure that this Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hands of Herod and from all that the people were expecting. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord set free from all my fears. Look, the Lord has set me free from all my fears. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. The Lord set me free from all my fears. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord set me free from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried out and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The Lord set me free from all my fears. The Lord, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, look, look, taste and see that the Lord is good, and happy are those who take refuge in him. The Lord is a from all my fears. Second reading, a reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for this happening, that this appearing. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the, the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not, has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, my dear friends. Today is uh, June 29, and today we celebrate the solemnity of uh, Saints Peter and Saint Paul. And the church described that Saint Peter and Saint Paul are often described as the pillars of the faith. That's why if you go to some churches, you can find their images in front. Peter and Paul. What is interesting in the life of these two great men is this. Both of them were sinful, weak, 
and fragile and filled with the human limitations. But they were called to spread the faith. They were called to strengthen the Christian community. Mother friends, mother brothers and sisters, the feast of these two wonderful followers of Christ reminds me and you that God can work through frail, that God can work through weak and sinful people to establish His kingdom on earth. We celebrate the solemnity of Peter and Paul to remind us that like them, allow God to show His strength in your weakness. We have our limitations, we have our weakness, but allow God to work to show His strength in your weakness. Because admitting our limitations, admitting our weakness, does not diminish our strength. Like Peter and Paul, we are challenged today to use our weakness as a stepping stone to build and to spread God's kingdom on earth. We have our weaknesses, but what our second reading is trying to tell us, keep the faith and finish the race. Continue. And the second point that I would like to share today is this. We have to magnify our strength, not our weakness. Magnify your strength. Focus on your strength, not on your limitations. Paul, he was a former persecutor of the Christian, but he was used by God to spread the faith. Can you imagine you are a murderer? And those who believe in Christ, you killed them. But at the end, you were used by God to spread the faith. The church that you destroyed before, you are now the one defending it. And even the life of Peter, I called him the denial king. And that was his weakness. He keeps on denying and denying. He is a man who acts without thinking. And without thinking, but he was chosen as the head of the apostle. Today, we are challenged. Our weakness, our limitations, our sins is not a hindrance to be good. Our limitations is not a stumbling block to make the power of God operate in us. Keep the faith, finish the race. Embrace your faith, embrace your weakness to reach your strength. Because I believe we are strong when we know that we are weak. God's grace works in the life of weak people. That's why our responsorial song for me is very powerful. And it is telling us, ask the Lord to free us from all our fears. Today, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, the good news is this. We are sinful. We have our own limitations. But do not magnify your sins. Do not magnify your weakness. Do not focus on your limitations. Magnify your strength instead. We are sinful. We are weak. But like Peter and Paul, allow God to shine in our weakness. Finish the race and keep the faith alive. 
Saints Peter and Paul, pray for us. Amen. Please rise and let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was dead. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From there he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We bring our intentions to the Father with that same face of the Apostles Peter and Paul, with the face of the fishermen on whom the church is built, and the face of the teacher of so many nations. In every petition, let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. That Pope Francis, successor of St. Peter, may bear the keys of the kingdom with wisdom and love, let us pray to the Lord. That missionaries in foreign lands may have the zeal which St. Paul had in bringing the good news. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may love our faith and eagerly share it with others. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who are suffering on account of their faith may find strength in the blood shed by the apostles. Let us pray to the Lord. That the faithful departed may be made worthy of the crown of righteousness. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Especially, I remember, it is prayer also for those who are celebrating their birthday today, especially for the birthday of Monsignor Peter Calimero, and those who are remembering also their wedding anniversaries and the loss of their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Amen. In silence, we present now to the Lord our personal concerns and intentions. of this community gathered in the face of the apostles and held by their intercession we ask this through Christ our Lord Amen. Blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth work of human hand it will become for us the bread of life Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual food. Amen. Please stand. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. May the prayer of the Apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration, and may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul brings us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith, Paul, his outstanding preacher, Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel. 
for master and teacher of the Gentiles that you are. And so each in a different way gathered together the one family of Christ and revered together throughout the world. They share one martyr's crown, and therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you without end. We are praying. Holy, holy, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the God of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and after being led to his passion, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, I need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from me, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Mystery of faith. <laughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. How do we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit? Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, all of our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep. In the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. <coughs> of mercy and us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints of Christians throughout the ages, we may marry to the chorus eternal life, and we praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to our apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins and on the face of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <coughs> Lamb of God, you may proceed to the world's Behold the love of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by the sacrament, so to live in the church that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, make steadfast in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer against coronavirus. Almighty and merciful Father, we thank you for the life that we should give, for the providence that sustains us, and for wisdom that directs the course of our days. We give our sins against your love, against each other, and against your creation. The threat of an infection of coronavirus is upon us today. This disease causes here among us and claims some life. We only beg you, loving Father, to deliver us from these and other diseases. Heal those who are selected and stop the spread of the virus. Strengthen us in charity and care for each other. We ask this, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, today, always magnify your strength, not your weakness, not your limitations. Because, and always remember, even though we are weak, even though we are fragile, God's grace will always work in us. Just keep the faith and finish the race. Because in a moment of persecution, like Peter, God will give us an angel to guide and to help us. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ.